Okay, Lexus keeps spamming me to trade in my Lexus GX 460 for this 2024 Lexus GX 550. I only have to pay $44,000 with the MSRP of 68 grand. Uh, Lexus thinks my uh, 21 GX 460 with only 26,000 miles on it is worth 30,000 in uh, trade-in. Uh, actually, my Lexus GX 460 is uh, worth about $40 in trade-in. I don't think Lexus knows what I've been up to in these 26,000 miles. Yeah, so today we're going to do an apples to apples comparison. We are going to compare the 24GX550 premium trim to the 2021 or last generation, doesn't matter which, which year, but the GX460 premium uh, trim. So we're going to compare apples to apples to show you why you should not trade in your Lexus GX460 for a GX550. When it comes to the premium, and we're doing apple to apples here, premium to premium, the new premium essentially means I'm getting less. It's a downgrade. There's no sweet or nice way to put it. You are getting less and paying more. Let's start right here at the axles. You're not getting a front and rear disconnectable sway bar known on the old GX460 as KDSS. On this new generation, it's called EKDSS. Every GX460 Premium had disconnectable front and rear sway bars. They had them. All Premiums came with front and rear disconnectable sway bars. Your new Premium that I'm supposed to be upgrading to does not have them. So it's a downgrade. That's right. Every GX460 Premium... In fact, all trims, even the base GX460 had KDSS, a front and rear disconnectable sway bar. The successor to KDSS, EKDSS, right here, uh, is not on the GX550 Premium. So the old Premium GX460 had uh, disconnectable sway bars, but the new one doesn't. That's called a downgrade. All right, what else can I upgrade? two in the gx550 premium looky here here's the inside of the gx550 premium and lexus has upgraded us by downgrading us <laughs> by removing the wooden steering wheel that's right your old lexus gx460 premium got the classic lexus hardwood steering wheel and wood accents yes with the 550 i've been downgraded to plastic in place of the wood steering wheel this is the gx 460 interior with its real hardwood steering wheel up here we got wood up here and we got wood down here i know it's hard to see but this is dark uh, hardwood it is real it feels good it looks good and best of all you get wood accents everywhere else in certain places like up here on the dash here by the glove box and they're just peppered throughout the interior and it makes for a really nice classic luxury uh, Lexus luxury interior but look look how I can upgrade <laughs> we deleted the wood and we put plastic in its place. Your new premium GX550 doesn't need that hardwood. It doesn't need any hardwood over here by the glove box. And the interior is overall crappier and cheaper all around. Upgrade today to the new premium GX550.
Oh, but we're not done. The third thing down here in this area where your speaker should be, uh, it doesn't say Mark Levinson anywhere. Oh, that's right. There's no Mark Levinson premium sound system in this new GX550 Premium. Upgrade today to not having your Mark Levinson that came standard with your GX460 Premium. Ah, my GX460 by Lexus. The Premium came with the Premium Mark Levinson Premium Surround System. Your new GX550 upgrades that system by deleting it. Downgrade is the new upgrade. Now it's impossible to list all the differences between the GX460 Premium and the new GX550 Premium, but it suffice to say that many of the old GX460 Premium features are simply not on the new Premium. It's not an upgrade, it's not an even trade, it is literally a downgrade. Things like memory seats and heated and ventilated second row seats are missing now from the premium and you have to opt for some of these higher trims in order to get things like the Mark Levinson uh, surround sound system. Now this is not all, you know, if you want EKDSS you need to get a different trim. The list goes on uh, heated heated second row outboard seats this was all standard stuff on the premium so if you don't get my drift here Lexus thinks you're stupid they're offering less and selling it for more <laughs> it's as simple as that there is no other way to put it the old GX460 premium had it all but you can see here there's so many Mickey Mouse trims we got plus, base, base premium plus, 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 premium plus, luxury plus, overtrail plus, premium base plus, 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 plus. And the reason why there's so many silly trims is because they don't want to give you this again. A Land Cruiser Prado <laughs> with a V8 engine with all the luxury and all the off-road stuff. Sure, it's not perfect. The stupid side steps, the plastic body kit, the low hanging bumper were all a problem for anybody who wanted to off road this thing. But other than that, once you cut this crap off, underneath was a Land Cruiser Prada with a bigger engine and transmission and all the luxury appointments and features inside. Those days are over and Lexus has cut the GX550 or the GX into so many trim levels and it no longer offers the steel of a value that it was. At one point, these Lexus GX were an amazing steal because everybody thought that the uh, Lexus GX460 was based on the Forerunner instead of the other way around. People actually thought the Forerunner was the base vehicle, and this was just a dressed-up Forerunner. They didn't understand that the Forerunner was a watered-down, diluted GX460, a.k.a. Land Cruiser Prado. So intelligent buyers waltzed right in to the Lexus dealer years ago, and we passed... Things like Forerunners being sold for $80,000, TRD Pro Forerunners, back in 2021. And we could find these things for $55,000 to $65,000 at the Lexus dealer. I'm talking about the GX460. It was a steal. And so the cat's kind of out of the bag with the GX550. Uh, the GX no longer is seen as a soccer mommy mobile, and I'm talking about the GX 470, the GX 460. Word got out that it was a Land Cruiser Prado, and that it was a steal because everybody thought it was a boring unibody crossover soccer mommy mobile. And I think Lexus caught wind of this, and they were, and they basically said, "Hey, we we have to." Uh, you know, we have to milk this cow for all it's worth. 
because people now know what the GX is, so we got to charge more for it. And in doing so, uh, they got a little greedy because charging more is fine if you're getting more or even the same. But as we're seeing here, as I'm comparing our GX Premium to the uh, GX5, GX460 Premium to the GX550 Premium, you can see there's a bunch of stuff that's simply deleted and taken away. And that's simply greed. That's simply them pushing it too far. That's trying to extend their profit margins. That's try it's just trying to take a risk and go for it and see what happens. You know, stuff like having the over trail uh, version not have a third row. And this is the only way, again, we can get the disconnectable front and rear sway bars with EKDSS and uh, on, a, on a modern GX, GX550. Uh, but you don't get a third row. So again, they're taking something out. It's this give and take and playing around with the trims. You get this here, you get this here, plus, 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 minus, plus, minus, plus, plus, luxury, plus, 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 and all this nonsense. And that's just the stuff that we can kind of see on the outside and uh, read off the spec table. There is um, new evidence that is suggesting that even though the GX550 is on the TNGAF platform shared with the Land Cruiser 300 GR Sport in the world market that the frame is actually a little bit different it's basically lighter slightly it's been tweaked there's some changes to the bump stops the frame mounted bump stops you get one instead of two like the Land Cruiser 300 so there are actually in addition uh, to the changes we talked about so far there are some subtle differences in the frame and body that are yet to be discovered, but there's evidence uh, pointing that uh, Lexus cut corners here too. In the past, I've said, hey, if you get a, a GX550, you're getting a Land Cruiser 300 frame. It's the same frame, they just, you know, the engine's detuned by 60 or whatever horsepower, and uh, they took away the front locker. But if you get this overtrail trim, you know, it's the same as a Land Cruiser. A 300 but again the evidence is mounting up little stuff like this you know the just the GX 550 the hood is aluminum and the fender is steel the front door is steel and the rear door is steel but on the Land Cruiser 300 these three pieces which then add to six pieces and then the roof is aluminum so on the GX 550 you get all this extra steel weight where the Land Cruiser 300 is all aluminum there yeah, on the Land Cruiser 300, the hood is still aluminum, but the fender, instead of being steel, is aluminum. The uh, front door is aluminum, the rear door is aluminum, and parts of the roof are aluminum. But in the GX550, they're steel. So yeah, straight from uh, Toyota's website on the Land Cruiser uh, 300, uh, we could see, uh, you know, we got an aluminum hood, aluminum roof, and door panels. That's on the Land Cruiser 300. GX 550, they're all back to steel again. Which begs the question, what else has changed here on um, this, you know, TNGAF platform between the Land Cruiser uh, 250, the LX 600, and the um, Lexus GX 550? And... As I stated earlier, uh, evidence is mounting that the frames are different. And basically what I'm trying to ramble here, this is the engineer for the 250, Land Cruiser 250, a.k.a. the American Land Cruiser. And he's basically pointing out how um, they changed it from uh, what's going to be on the, or what was the Land Cruiser 300 frame. Basically this is lighter and uh, there's less bump stops on the front and other suspension changes. And I don't have all the answers. This is in Japanese, and I'm still, still translating it. But uh, it's uh, the point of this rambling is that um, I think there's more going on in between T and GAF platforms. So from the Land Cruiser 300 all the way down to the Tacoma and everything in between, Sequoia, LX600, blah, 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 we don't need to go all around. All the trucks and SUVs are all on this platform now. And in the beginning, I said, well, at least the frame's all, the core frame is still a Land Cruiser 300 frame. But uh, Toyota is, it did some stuff here, and they're not being forthright about it. They're not telling you everything they shaved off the Land Cruiser 300 frame to turn it into your Tacoma frame, your GX550 frame, your Land Cruiser 250 frame, etc. The so-called, all the, the stuff under the Land Cruiser 300. They did stuff to the frame that I believe... 
uh, is is different. What we do know here is that this is the Land Cruiser 300, and he is saying that the frame and here's the 250. They're different. The frames are different. They're similar. They're very similar, and it's still technically the TNGAF platform. But what he's trying to say is that uh, the 250 uh, frame is thinner than this. This is the 300 frame again. And this is the 250 frame. And it is a lighter, thinner frame overall. And then we're being robbed of that aluminum roof and all these aluminum fenders and doors and stuff. We're being robbed of that. <laughs> so to bring this all full circle and back to Lexus, and I know that was a bit of a rambling, but there is a point to my rambling. And that is simply Lexus is really pushing it too far here because comparing apples to apples, premium 460 to premium 550, as we saw, they have deleted a whole lot, but they're charging you a lot more. Furthermore, there's still stuff to be discovered about this TNGAF platform. The story is not over. These are not identical Land Cruiser 300 frames uh, being glued onto the various different trucks and SUVs. I think there's other differences that aren't being openly discussed because I don't think Toyota and Lexus want you to know the uh, that they shaved off some, some stuff here and shaved off some stuff there to make the thing cheaper. So while I am a proponent and always have been of the Lexus GX550, it does fall short when again we compare apples to apples and greed is at hand. There's too many features removed, too many things shuffled around and the price went up. And um, by the way, the gas mileage is essentially the same. And power matters not when you're off-road. So I get that the engine is more powerful and that's going to make a lot of people feel happy. But when you're off-road, this thing is going two miles per hour. You're never using any of that power. And what's more important is does the thing disconnect the sway bars and do you have all the off-road features that used to come standard on your Lexus GX460? But Lexus is saying, hey, trade in your premium Lexus GX460 for a Lexus GX550 premium. Oh, you're just not going to get those super awesome front and rear disconnectable sway bars anymore. And a bunch of other stuff. But um, don't worry, you can pay more. <laughs> and we'll give you 30000 or as we said, about 40 bucks. Uh, <laughs> with, with everything, a uh, trade-in value, and that trade-in value of $40 is super fair. Um, <laughs> but even still, it's not about what the trade-in, anything nonsense right here. It's about everything that, they, that they're, they're scaling back on here. But this thing here used to have it all. That's the whole point. That's the whole point of this rant, and I know it's a rant. We're just having fun here. But the whole point of this thing was you got a little baby Land Cruiser, and that meant... It, all that meant was the wheelbase was shorter, which is actually a benefit off-road. <laughs> this wasn't like the full Land Cruiser 200 that was longer and bigger and fatter. None of that matters off-road. The whole point of the Land Cruiser Prado and the GX460 was the old Land Cruiser 100 and 200s were getting too fat and big to go off-road. So they actually made the Land Cruiser Prado and the GX460 specifically for off-road buyers. The EKDS, or excuse me, KDSS, front and rear disconnectable sway bars, debuted not on the full-size Land Cruiser, they debuted on the Land Cruiser Prado. This Lexus GX460, they went on this thing first because it was intended to go off-road, smaller, lighter, more maneuverable, blah, blah, blah. But the point is, you still got everything. They didn't hold back here. They didn't take away the wood steering wheel. They didn't take away the leather. They didn't take away the third row. They didn't take away the stereo system, the heated seats, the memory seats, all the other whatever luxury nonsense is in this thing. They gave it all to you. But when we look at this new GX550 Premium, you cannot deny the fact that you are objectively getting less and paying for more. There's simply no way around that. This is not what the GX used to be, whether we're talking about the 470 or the 460. But now we have this kind of trimmed down, scaled back, shaved off value 
proposition in a luxury vehicle, something no Lexus buyer ever asked for. Let me get a cheaper uh, Lexus with a cheaper interior. That's what I want. We already know it's a splurge. You're already cross-shopping luxury vehicles. You want it all. So I don't understand the reason that Lexus did this other than sheer greed and seeing what they could get away with. Now this can all be fixed by Lexus if they want to. It's super easy. All you got to do, Lexus, is do what you did with the 460 and 470. You take this premium here and you stuff back into it everything that I mentioned earlier. You put on <laughs> the front and rear disconnectable sway bars. You glue those back on. You glue the wood, the hardwood that all Lexuses have had for the past 30 years. You glue that wood steering wheel back on and you glue the wood trim pieces back in there. And then you glue the premium, the true premium or luxury leather or fake leather, whatever. Make it look nice like it's supposed to in here versus a more upscale Toyota product. You want to make it look like a Lexus inside. You put back all the luxury features that should be standard. Memory seats, heated seats, ventilated seats, power fold and mirrors. You put all that crap back in here where it belongs. You don't take that away. Because remember, all Lexuses came with this stuff standard back in the day. And when I say back in the day, I just mean the last generation a year ago. <laughs> That means you glue the Mark Levinson stereo back inside the Lexus, like all Lexuses have always got Mark Levinson stereo since they came out with the Mark Levinson stereo system. You glue it back in and you make this thing a Lexus again instead of a Toyota with an L glued on it. This is real simple. Lexus has to put the Lexus back in the Lexus. The taking away of the Lexus stuff can only be explained by wanton greed and risk taking. But Lexus might be onto something because Lexus knows that many buyers aren't coming from Lexus products. So when you see people that are happy with their GX 550s and they go what are you talking about the interior is not so bad it seems pretty premium to me it seems pretty luxurious to me I'm happy with my GX 550 they're not coming from Lexus vehicles you're not going to hear any GX 460 owner impressed with the inside or the trimmings of the GX 550 the Lexus LX 600 interior is a proper Lexus GX interior and it's simply missing on all trims of this GX 550. So I don't think Lexus did this by mistake. What they're trying to do is reach a new customer. Someone who's not used to a true Lexus experience or a true Land Cruiser experience and instead give them this new look rugged or whatever nonsense you want to call it boxy uh, exterior it looks new it's big and then they're gonna see what they can take away hoping that buyers that never experience Lexuses don't notice what they're missing you can't miss what you never had we remember when a Lexus was a Lexus there were no trims it was just a Lexus there was no plus 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 there was no luxury on top of your luxury vehicle or luxury plus on top of your luxury plus 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 luxury vehicle when you bought a Lexus LS 400 that was just called a Lexus back then there were no trim options the whole point of a Lexus was throwing the entire kitchen sink at the buyer in the endless pursuit of perfection or whatever it was I'm probably botching it but it was something about the continual or endless pursuit of perfection that's what made Lexus all Lexuses owe their existence to this mother vehicle here and what we must remember about this vehicle is that it had an ideology and that was to give the buyer 
absolutely, positively everything and not screw them over with price gimmicks, trim gimmicks, or by denying them core features that luxury buyers had come to expect from luxury vehicles. So the new GX550 in its premium trim is a diversion from this old school Lexus principle of just sheer perfection, sheer overindulgence with everything, with Japanese quality, durability, and reliability thrown in to make the thing last forever. These things are still on the road out here in Southern California. <laughs> These original first year 1980 whatever Lexus LS 400s. Will your GX 550 last that long? We hope so. That is a possibility. But what we do know is that they, they meaning Lexus, has, has strayed from this here. Where you have one trim to choose from. Lexus. We're not letting you leave this dealer with a cheap interior. With a substandard stereo. With a third row missing with features missing that you've come to expect. You're not going to leave this Lexus dealer unless you get it all.